Hey y'all, it's your boy Infamous, but you can call me M3 Bullet, and this is my Halloween movie review. When I review horror movies and Halloween movies, Halloween is my favorite time of the year, my main holiday. The candy, the costume, and most important of all, the movies. For the guys that's been watching my channel, I know I don't normally look like this. This is my demon form. What do you think? And this is my laboratory where I do my experiments. Take a look if you want to. Since Halloween is around the corner, I might as well review some Halloween movies. Tonight, I'm going to review The Nightmare Before Christmas. Like, share, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. Okay, so the movie was created by Tim Burton in 1993. If you watch any DC movie, he directed the Batman movie with Michael Keaton. And this is a fun fact, he has the same disorder like me. If you want an explanation, watch this video. So the movie starts out with the narration explaining that there's a tree that is a door for each holiday. You know, Easter and St. Patrick's Day. Then the movie officially starts out with this song. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. We are introduced to the main characters, Jack Skellington, the hero of the story. And Sally is this Franken... This red-headed Frankenstein version of him, I guess. The townspeople were basically congratulating Jack for his leadership at the Halloween celebration. Jack was the most well-known, scariest being in Halloween Town, Mr. Cool Guy. After that, the townspeople were getting too grateful. He snuck away from the crowd and went to the cemetery. He started singing a, a personal favorite of mine. That's my favorite song, by the way. Where he explained how he was burnt out of being the Pumpkin King and being the scariest being around. And he wants to ditch the title. While he was singing, Sally was watching him. She kind of has romantic feelings for Jack. The next morning, the mayor came looking for Jack to go over the plans for next year's Halloween. And he noticed that Jack was not home, and the mayor and the townspeople were freaking out that Jack's not home. During that, Jack was walking around the woods, and that's when he saw the door to the other holidays. He opened the Christmas one and got sucked in. Jack head back into town, where he asked the mayor to have a town meeting. Jack was explaining how Christmas, what Christmas was, and he, he was figuring out Christmas. While he was figuring that out, Sally, the one that has romantic feelings for him, dropped food at his door tower thing. He took it and looked outside to see Sally, but she left. Then Sally picked up a twig and it turned into a Christmas tree. A few seconds, then it burst into flames. The next morning, everyone was freaking out because Jack's not around. He's in his house, basically losing his mind over Christmas until he realized that he was overthinking it, thinking too hard. And that's when he, he got a plan to take over Christmas. Kind of like the Grinch from the Grinch Stole Christmas. You know, you know, the green guy, you know what I mean. Sally was not digging that idea. Everyone was in town preparing for Christmas. Sally tries to tell Jack that that's not him, but he didn't listen because he was too excited. He sent three little kids to kidnap Santa that was secretly working for Oogie Boogie, the bad guy. Jack told them about the whole thing. The kids had their fingers crossed. The kids went out to kidnap Santa. First time they did, they got the Easter Bunny. There was one day left, the kids kidnapped Santa and brought him into town. Jack basically said, Yo, Santa, you can chill out, and I'm taking over Christmas this year. After he took his hat, the kids took Santa to Oogie Boogie's lair. The guy is like the mob boss. Jack was about to take off, and Sally tried to stop him by making it so foggy to the point where no one can not see, until Zero, Jack's dog, with a glowing red nose, a good, a good Rudolph reference, I might add. Then we got a little montage of Jack being Santa and the kids not digging the gift giving. While he was doing that, people are calling the cops and Jack is still not getting a sucks at Christmas. Everyone was watching through this TV pot thing that the witches have. Then the military are starting to step in. Sally tried to find Santa because she knows it's not going to go well. 
she finds him in Oogie's lair and tries to save him, and it, but she ends up captured. In the part where I mentioned where the military kicked in, they tried to knock Jack out of the sky. He tried, but it didn't. People thought Jack died, but he was in the cemetery. And another song about Jack's personal issues, and that's when he realized that he sucks at it and became himself again. But he forgot about Santa Claus and went back to find him to fix Christmas because Christmas was about to be over. He found Sally, Illy, and Santa and rescued them. Jack apologized for kidnapping Santa and Santa left to fix Christmas and Christmas was saved. Then Jack realized that Sally is in love with Jack and they were about to kiss until the dumb mayor cock blocked them. They got out of Oogie's lair and went back into town. Everyone was glad that Jack's all right and started snowing and Sally went to, into the cemetery. Jack pursued his woman and a good love song was playing. There was a, a kiss and the movie was over. Yo, what up, G Dot? How you been, man? Um, doing pretty good. How you been doing, Infamous? Good, good, man, good. What'd you think about The Nightmare Before Christmas? Mm, it's a great movie, and I'm pretty sure that your film is probably gonna be very inspirational to other people. Well, well, wait, what do you mean, my films? Oh, you mean my channel? My bad. Okay, we gotta admit, Tim Burton, well done, bravo, sir. Yeah, I, I agree all the way. Jack Skeleton, I mean, I can relate to Jack Skeleton, though. I mean, he kind of is like what it's like to be like the successful rich person. Like, we know that the rich people don't got it easy. Yeah. And honestly, though, I mean... I can see a little bit of myself in Jack. I mean, I'm well known for being a drawer in real life and on this channel too. Yeah. Anywho. Okay. There's like a lot of plot holes in this movie. Like, how the heck did Sally know where where the where Santa Claus was? And how? Okay. Honestly, the movie was a little rushed, though. Don't you agree? I I, I, t I totally agree. I mean, like, they just rushed... I mean, I'm not saying the writing is bad, though. I mean, the writing was decent. And this movie is kind of dark, though, f for a Disney movie. I mean, this came out back in the 90s, like, the Renaissance age. And almost every Disney movie back in that time was, like, dark as crap. Like, Batman DC Comics dark. Yeah. Well, I do gotta hand it to Tim Burton. I mean... He is also the director of the 1980 Batman film, if you think back to it. Yeah, I know that. Like, everybody knows that. Like, anyone I've ever seen or even know anything about Batman, probably seen that movie, which is good in my opinion. Yeah, that movie's was great in my opinion. I mean, it's the introduction of Batman films. Yeah. And with that, I like how they kind of had, like, Jack and Sally kissing you, and that was a good romantic ending. Yeah, that was actually one of my most favorite parts of the movie. Which was your favorite song, though? Uh, I would have to do the one where, I, I don't know the names of the songs, but I'm probably going to have to go with the one with the Boogeyman. The Oogie Boogie song. I like the song because it was it was dark, aggressive, yet very, very funny. Yeah, it kind of was funny. It kind of was a little upbeat in comparison to all the other songs, though. I mean, except Jack's Obsession. Like, that's, an, that's another song. But my personal favorite was Jack's Lament, where he was basically describing, like, how he was feeling. Like, why, like, the holiday he claimed that was his holiday. Like, he's the master of it. But he started to grow bored of it. Like, it happens with every artist. 
every artist get like burnt out or bored with drawing and painting. Like every artist get like that every now and again. Yeah, I mean that is something that we all face in life. Is at times we'll be so good at something for so long that you just don't want to do it, but everyone expects you to do it. Mm hmm. I mean, after all, he did have the title of what the Pumpkin King. And know that there was a theory. King of Halloween, yeah. There was a theory online that Jack once used to be a human, and he was the headless horseman. I mean, that would actually make a lot of sense. I, I mean, mean, like in the first I'm part of the movie. Intro. In the first part of the movie, like we seen Jack, like when he first came in, he was on a horse with a pumpkin on his head. Anyone that know about the head of the horseman knows that he wear a pumpkin on his head. And he was on fire. Yep. And it made sense. I mean, like, Jack is, like, pretty... Like, he's, he's a skilled strategist, leader, and fighter. Like, anyone with those type of skills had to be a soldier back then. And it yeah. made sense, though. And only that the mayor was stupid, though. Like, everyone was stupid. Like, the moment Jack, like was gone, everybody went to, into chaos. Like, no one don't know nothing or don't even know how to do nothing without Jack around. Like, that's how yeah. much of cool Jack was, though. That's like... It's like having a, a party of 100 people but no one's a lead. They're gonna be all over the place. It's gonna be caught in chaos. I know. But it was good, though. Alright, wait, hold on. Don't you got, like, a little channel of your own? Yes, I do got a channel of my own. Make sure y'all like and subscribe to uh, G. Wolf. Um, I'm pretty sure that he's gonna have my name in the link in bio. But, um, yeah. Alright, G. Dot. That's it, man. Alright. See you, infamous. Okay guys, fun's over. Like, share, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. And check out my boy G.Wolf. His channel is down below, so I recommend checking it out. He's a dope dude. His, his videos are fire. Trust me. Bye bye